and the ball wasn't coming on that, that much. So I think it was important. We have taken control of the one-day series. Four points from their two games. The West Indies and England yet to get off the mark. The toss was won by Jimmy Adams, and in bowler-friendly conditions, it was no surprise when he chose to field first. He has Corey Collimore in the team in place of Rion King. Sherwin Campbell is back from Barbados and will play. England, Triscothic, the form man. Matthew Maynard there, and no place today for Flintoff, Craig White returns to the team everything set up then and a full house predicted again the first over of the day was quite remarkable not once did Marcus Trithgothic get bat on ball Michael Slater is with me Nixon McLean sometimes he can be fairly erratic but there's one thing for sure he's always working up a big head of steam and he really was getting the ball through nicely and with accuracy I like the fact that Trithgothic plays down the line of the ball he doesn't follow the ball and I think that's important and will serve him well. In fact, I think the general view is that his start in international cr cricket reflects someone who seems comfortable with the environment. He doesn't look to panic. He's playing the natural game. Now, Alex Stewart at the other end has a bit more experience. And when he got one over pitch from Collimore, he just leant into it. That initial back movement, the beautiful movement forward, and a splendid cover drive that really got England going. So, a steady start, 23 from six overs. Got good catch. Chris Gale, the man that snipped, and Alex Stewart is gone. It was a ball of full length. This one down the corridor on a good length as well. Just tempting the drive, but not just there. Getting the outside edge and held smartly at slip. Very confidently as well by Chris Gale. A good start for the West Indies. Just what they needed. Removing the England captain. 23 for one. Corker to get first ball. It's an excellent delivery to get first up on the perfect length, just coming back down the hill. Fine stroke. That's Graham Hickett's very best. A beauty. Not all that short. It's not a bad ball. Collymore must uh, wonder what's going on. Just short of a length, got inside it and just flipped it over square leg. Quality shot. He's on the pull stroke again. And that was controlled with masterful quality. It's the hands, beautiful with the hands, just flicking. He saw it short and he's just flicked it with the wrist. And that's what Graham Hick ought to be doing with the short ball. Hasn't quite got inside it. He's a little quicker, Nixon McLean, but he's used his wrist to just flick it away. Oh, he's inside edged it. He's gone. It didn't half come back off the seam. And Hick, in such good form, is now Returning to the pavilion, that is a blow for England. Oh, he's a little unlucky here. This has moved a long way. Played the right shot, looking to hit it away, and it just came back such a long way. Look where Ridley Jacobs has to go to get this one. A little bit of bad luck for Graham Hick, but Nixon McLean, that's a good delivery. 41 for two, Graham Hick out for 12. Dropped it. Should have caught it. Didn't quite get to it. I think Collymore should get some credit. He should have caught that with two hands, Chris Gale. Four. Easy as you like. It would have been eight if the field had been big enough. He really was powerfully hit. No need to run for anybody here. Just a little bit of width from Nixon McLean. <laughs> Lovely swing of the bat.
Bold him. A misjudgment from Maynard. The ball may have come back up the hill a fraction. But this return to the international arena for the Glamorgan captain is not going well. Great disappointment for Matthew Maynard. It was a very good delivery. He went up the hill, but he has been swinging it in. And that one's off the pitch. Very good delivery. Nice upright seam. And it's nipped back. And Maynard has made a misjudgment, as he did yesterday. Missed a full toss. And now he's left one. Big disappointment for England. Matthew Maynard departs. Without troubling the scorer. Three down now, England. 13.2 overs. 47 on the board. Graham Thorpe walking to the wicket. And Marcus Triscothic all the while doing all he can to keep England together. A pull shot from Triscothic. Not too short. Running away. Jimmy Adams doing the chasing. Good dive. Everyone in the West Indies side will appreciate that dive from the skipper. Hey, Julian calling the third umpire just to make sure it was a legitimate save. It was very athletic work from the captain. A pace, he put the dive in, flip the ball back. And saved a run for his team and his bowler. little lucky there didn't quite catch it caught it well enough and it's racing towards the pavilion and that'll be four runs another boundary press gothic that is the chart and the wickets are down the bottom with the red blocks england just picking up the rate thanks to uh, marcus Tres gothic playing a few strokes there that is what they might get at four and over one nine six i reckon they want about five and over if they can and get to sort of 220. And that's a good shot from Tress Kothic. He really is proving to be very strong through the cover region. That's a perfect cover drive. Yeah, what he does well is he keeps himself balanced when hitting the ball on the up. He doesn't try to hit it too hard. Now, England need a partnership. Thorpe and Triscothic together is the go. Thorpe has the ability to manoeuvre the ball around the field. Triscothic will play the bigger strokes. Thorpe back in the side, very committed. Didn't try any big strokes early on. He was building innings. One of those innings where you suddenly look at the scoreboard and he's got 30. Meanwhile, at the other end... Another beautiful cover drive there from Triscothic. He really is making a mark early in international cricket. And he's just out there playing his natural game. He's come from Somerset, shown good form all season, and it really is a natural game for him. And there's a short one to, to Thorpe. And that was fast. That was Mervyn Dillon. The score around sort of 86 for three. And Dillon came on to bowl and whistled it past Thorpe's nose here. That's as quick a ball as we've seen all summer. Still a chance for the man going around the boundary to stop it, which he does, but not totally. I wasn't going to be too pleased about that. He may have uh, wished to see a slide and a dive and a sweep back into the ground. Beautiful shot from uh, Graham Thorpe. Anything in his eye, he's going to go after it. I think Brian Laura got the wrong foot to it. If he'd got the other foot, the left foot, if he timed it to get the left, the instep, he would have done better. And has just hit into the rope. Bring back Dwight York, I say. It's gone. Just an attempted turn on the onside. It didn't actually run down the hill. Found the outside edge, the leading edge. And Triscothic has gone. 79 yesterday, 49 today. Two good performances, but it uh, is one of those where he really will be disappointed. Slower delivery from Gale. And Chris Gothic has played the penalty for playing just a little bit too early. I think he wanted to play it away on the onside. It's hit the leading edge and just looped up in the air. And Gale accepts that with delight. 99 for four, Chris Gothic 49.
Well, that's the best ball of the morning, I suspect. I think the replay may show that as well. Looking to play it uh, on the leg side, and it's just fizzed away from him. He's bolted from wide on the crease. And look how square he is at pace. Very good bowling from Mervyn Dillon. He's got the past the bat on numerous occasions. Three on the trot, in fact, to Craig White, and one particular over. It's Mark Elam standing up. He's got the pads on. Next man in. And he's just going to relax, take a seat. And the time since the last boundary is 58 balls over half an hour. Big, big shout, and he's gone. Craig White. Well, he played and missed at a lot of balls. Very similar deliveries from Dylan. Now Franklin Rose got one in the right place and collects the edge as it motors through to Ridley Jacobs behind the stumps. It's a better start by Franklin Rose. Struggled early on in his first spell, four for 19, but replies very well. Second ball, outside edge. Bounce, bit of movement as well. Well caught by Ridley Jacobs. England are in further trouble now. Craig White has gone for 10, 120 for 5. Yes, and the loss of White at that stage will have completely changed England's ambition. The idea of 2-2-5 two, two, will have been a long, long way away. A big problem. Thorpe has to hang on in there for me if he's to get England up to the 200 mark. Maybe that's uh, a plotting contest going on between Lara and Adams. Maybe it's a bit of admonishment. Who knows? There is uh, England's run rate. Immediately Stuart with that boundary, getting them up to four and over, and then it's sort of levelled out at just below four all the way through. 3.39 at present, with a projected total of 177 if they go along at four and over from here. 204, six and over. I can't see that really at this stage, I must say. Mark Elam just throwing the bat at this one. He was obviously he's given orders to enter stage and try and get improve the run rate. Some good fielding down at third man from Nixon McLean. But once again, showing his intentions. That's a windy wolf. Lucky to get, get away with it. <laughs> it's, a, it's a windy wolf, and it's an old slog. And it didn't work. Thorpe with something more orthodox does work. It's a good stroke. Still not really big on boundaries, Thorpe. He's only got a couple in what's been a good innings. He's around about, uh, well, he's 42, not out at this stage. And a lot of them ones and twos. This could be a boundary, and is. Well played by Mark Elam. He stood up nice and tall and managed to get on top of the ball. He played it in the way that to Alan Lamb used to do, for example. He was a brilliant square cutter. Rocked forward, got on top of it, hit it down and hit it off the middle. And that's the first time England have hit the rope for an hour. 59 minutes. Manhattan 40 overs gone and there was a, a good bit of progress around the 20th over it was when uh, Treskothic was in form and he was out in the 26th over it's been pretty slow going since then just starting to pick up now the graph goes upwards whether it goes upwards fast enough I don't know I guess what we ought to be discussing Dermot is what a good score is I think conditions are handy for bowling 200 is protectable, isn't it? You'd want a few more than 200. Um, I'd say about 220 would be par. He's got. That is a disappointing bit of batting from Graham Thorpe. seemed to be in control of himself up until the last five or six minutes when he's rushed a few things still ten overs of the innings left and that's just a mistake he skipped down to Franklin Rose he's tried to hit it over mid off in the end a comfortable catch caught Mervyn Dillon for 42 England 148 for six 
Early on in the England innings, the Watch white out. ball seemed to climb quite steeply from a goodish length. This was the ball from Merv Dillon to Graham Thorpe. Very nasty delivery. Then later in the innings, that was a ball from Franklin Rose, which really shot along the ground, illustrating that there is a bit of uneven bounce in this pitch, or is it maybe that the white ball is getting softer as the innings goes on? Chris Gale has done the damage. The second wicket for the gentle off breaks of this talented young batsman who is causing England a problem with the ball. Mark Elam has gone. Mark Elam looking to run this down to third man, giving himself a little bit of room. It's pitched just outside off, spun back a little. Mark Elam will be disappointed with that. England really haven't played this spinner well at all. Got two for 28 at the moment. Elam gone for 17. England 152 for seven. He's bowled all 10 without conceding a boundary, which is why his economy rate of 2.8 is so good. England's players' spin the last two days has been appalling. They haven't knocked it around, found the gaps. There's the story of the fall of wickets. Another one's gone. This time it's Caddick. Harmless delivery in at uh, around about middle and leg, and he's chipped it very obligingly to mid wicket. So England are making a Horlix of what ought to have been around about 190, 200. Well, it was good field placing. The man was squarer for Andy Caddick. Jimmy Adams knows he likes to whip and play across the line. He's picked out the fielder. Jubilation for the West Indian supporters. Caddick's gone for naught. Those three wickets, bottom right there of the Manhattan chart, show how England have had a little collapse and also how the run rate has been quite inconsistent all the way through. Little bursts of activity. What that card really needs is somebody going on to a bigger score, 49 to Scothic, and nice to see Thorpe in touch, 42. But really, if you're going to get a big score in the one-day game, you need someone getting sort of 80, 90. Two for McLean, he's been the best. One for Collymore, three for Rose and two for Chris Gale, and one did feel that England let Gale off the hook, 10 overs, two for 28 for those off breaks. Then the rain came. That was a disappointment at 20 to 2. We'll be back here at Lords with you in just a moment. At the test, that rain that you saw before you left us stayed and got worse. Thank you for visiting Lords. Play was abandoned for the day at 5 o'clock. A massive disappointment. England 157 for eight and a point each to England and the West Indies. It spread across London and affected Wimbledon as well, of course. So uh, instead, we're going to show you the top dogs in the tournament. Be not 